Now we're going to convert from cutting strips to cutting the cork grip, which has already been mounted on the uh, butt section. After removing the <coughs> the uh, carriage for cutting the strip, we're going to for cutting the grip. <coughs> And this carriage has a spindle motor mounted on it along with a three jaw chuck to uh, hold and rotate the section. Now we're going to install the, um, the, uh, the vacuum nozzle to uh, control the cork dust. and attach the vacuum hose. Now we need to install the uh, the uh, tail stop there, right? Slide that into rough position. Now we've already uh, glued up uh, about six and a half inches of cork onto our uh, onto our butt section, and we've left about uh, three and a half inches for the reel seat, plus another three quarters of an inch so that we can chuck up this end in the three jaw chuck. To su to support the outboard. Uh, end of the rod. We have this um, arbor which has a 3 8 inch hex hole in it. We just simply slide that over the um, over the butt section and we've got some masking tape on it to to protect the finish a little bit. Now we'll mount the whole thing in the machine which is simply putting it in like this and then moving the tails, tail stock bearing and we'll tighten that up and now we'll we will tighten up the uh, three jaw chuck and we should be ready to go okay here is the home screen that we would normally see when we are cutting strips. Um, today what we want to do is, is cut uh, a cork grip so we have to go to the uh, to the uh, cork mill screen. I'll click on it and it brings up a screen that's just a little bit different. Uh, let's bring up the bring up a program. We're going to load a program for a para 14 grip. There it's come up. It's loaded into the uh, into the computer. Let's uh, edit it to take a closer look at it. Okay. Let's scroll down to the actual dimensions of the grip. Okay, and I'm going to increase the size of the window here. Go full screen. Now you notice the the dotted lines here and here what we do is paste our grip dimensions between those dotted lines. So we don't have to change anything in the preamble to the program or the exit statements of the program. All we have to do is put our new grip dimensions in this area. Let's take a look at it. Let's say for x equals 0, we want our diameter to be 1.063. And then as we move to a half inch up the grip, then we want that diameter to reduce to nine or 0.945 and so on number one uh, one inch up we want the diameter to be uh, 0.875 so it's pretty simple entering these in as uh, as diameters and as distance along the length of the grip now let's um, bring it back to regular size 
and I'm going to X out of it, which will take this back into the program. Okay, we're about ready to run, so the first thing we're going to do is click on the uh, Start Program button. And we've zoomed in on the screen so we can see a little bit better. Now, uh, the program brings us to a line here that says Set Oversize. So we go over to this part of the screen and we can increase the oversize on the first cut in increments of 50 thousandths. Now because this para 14 has a rather small diameter at the tip end of the grip, uh, we don't want to take too aggressive a cut. Uh, so what we're going to do is start at 350 thousandths oversize on the diameter. So we click it once, we get 50 thousandths oversize, and we keep clicking it until we get it up to 350. There's 300, there's 350 oversize. Now, after we complete the first cut, then we have the option of dropping down here and clicking on the uh, reduce the diameter by 20 thousandths in 20 thousand increments uh, say for the second cut. So on the second cut let's say we want to take 50 thousandths off. So then we click it once, twice, three times. We can't take 50 off because it's only in 20 thousand increments. So we go from 350 50 thousandths oversize on the first cut to 290 thousandths oversize on the second cut, which is a difference of 60 thousandths. So our cut depth is 60 thousandths on the diameter or 30 thousandths on the radius, which is the actual cut depth. Besides making a standalone grip, we can also machine both the real seat and the grip at the same time. Uh, we would glue the cork for the grip onto the rod and the square blank for the real seat we would mount uh, on the rod, but not permanently. Use some masking tape to um, get a good tight fit so that it won't move. After we're done machining, then we would pull the real seat off and take it to the uh, mortising attachment on the multi-track beveler and cut the mortise in it. And then reassemble the, uh, the real seat to the rod.
if you're into spay rods, uh, we can accommodate a cutting length of up to uh, 26 inches, which would uh, cover just about any application. Uh, the only caveat here is that we can't machine the butt cap, so leave three quarters of an inch of cane exposed so that we can grab it with the chuck, and uh, then after the machining is done, install the butt cap uh, as a final uh, assembly.